If you've ever been in a relationship with a toxic narcissist, then you know how difficult it can be to set boundaries. But did you know that you might struggle to set boundaries even after the relationship just because of kind of what happened during the relationship? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how and why you can and should set boundaries after a toxic relationship. If you're in a toxic relationship with a narcissist or you've ever been in one, you might have a few boundary issues. Am I right? One of the hardest parts about being involved with a narcissist is learning to set firm boundaries with them. Most narcissists have pretty poor boundaries themselves. Not only do they feel they need to win and maintain power, but they most certainly do not like others setting boundaries with them. Some narcissists even feel that they're not bound by the law, so they won't even follow court orders. And when you think about that, you can easily see why they find personal boundaries so easy to step all over and ignore. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Why it's so hard to set boundaries with narcissists and specifically how you can overcome this and successfully do exactly that. So let's get started. Have you ever thought about the boundaries you had for yourself and your life before you met the narcissist versus the ones you have now? or that you had during the relationship? Wait a minute, before you answer that, let me clarify something. I'm not talking about the silly or fun, kind of like I'll never wear bell bottoms kind of boundary. Had it, crossed it, can't wait to do it again. I'm talking about the serious, intrinsic, deep down in your gut, gotta stick to it or your tummy's gonna hurt kind of boundary. So let me ask you, have you had your basic personal boundaries changed or altered as a result of a toxic relationship with a narcissist. And while we're asking questions, if you're unfortunate enough to have a narcissistic parental figure or to have been in a relationship longer than you should, do you even really know what your personal boundaries are or have they been defined for you? Narcissists have a way of always pushing your boundaries, sometimes even as a way to amuse themselves when they get bored. No, I'm not kidding and that is not an exaggeration. I've been told by more than one narcissist that they just like to mess with people or that they intentionally start drama to see what people will do about it. They think it's funny, but sometimes their agenda is more calculated than just to amuse themselves. And that's when you've got to be really cautious because when it comes to dealing with a narcissist on the regular, you've got to recognize that a certain amount of conditioning happens to all of us and maybe even and especially those of us who are intelligent. You might find yourself in a panic if you have to stand up for yourself or say no to someone. And you might even have physical symptoms that include dry mouth, dissociation, where you kind of get confused and foggy, and you might even feel dizzy, nauseous, or just plain old anxious. This, of course, is exactly what the narcissist wants because it allows them to remain in control. They know that if they nag you, discredit you, and or step over whatever boundary they've crossed, you will eventually get tired of fighting and you'll just kind of let it go as an accepted or at least not require them to justify or discuss it. Well, this allows the toxic cycle to continue and repeat. So what does that cycle look like in real life? Well, I'm going to use a fictitious situation as an example today. We've got this couple, Ned and Jane, let's call them. Ned, the narcissist, and Jane, the semi-willing victim. They made a deal at the beginning of their relationship that neither one of them would have close friends of the opposite sex. This deal was made at the request of Ned and Jane happily complied, letting go of several close male friends to secure her place in Ned's fickle heart. Years later, Ned suddenly begins several new friendships with ladies at his office and then within the couple's shared social circles. Obviously, this doesn't sit well with Jane, who has consistently avoided friendships with the opposite sex since the boundary was set by Ned in the beginning. Jane raises her concerns and Ned tells her she's being paranoid. She's got nothing to worry about, but that maybe he, Ned, does because clearly Jane won't blindly trust him. And you know a narcissist needs their victim to blindly trust them. If they don't, the narcissist does everything in their power to break that person until they at least appear to behave as the narcissist wants them to behave. So instead of attempting to soothe Jane's fears, Ned plays them up and makes Jane feel like she's worthless. And this continued manipulation and gaslighting makes her afraid of asking about any of his choices ever, lest he unleash a fury that only a narcissist can. That's narcissistic injury and then narcissistic rage. So Ned the narcissist oversteps Jane's personal boundary and then Jane complains or resists or refuses 
at which point he pleads, prods, pokes, discredits, and pressures until she gives in and accepts the overstep. This leads to Jane redefining her boundary and saying something like, all right, fine, you can have female friends, but I better never find you hanging out with some, someone alone. Well, hours, weeks, days later, whichever it is, Jane catches the narcissist doing or not doing what she asked him to do or not to do. She obviously confronts him again, reminding him of the previously crossed line and redefined boundary. Then rinse and repeat, the cycle goes back through the steps. So how do you set relationship boundaries with a narcissist? Well, everyone's a little different, but there are certain basic boundaries that most everyone could benefit from setting in their life if they haven't already, and this includes you. When someone oversteps a boundary in an otherwise healthy relationship, whether it's spoken or unspoken, it becomes a serious concern for everyone involved. The person whose boundary has been overstepped is made to feel uncomfortable or worse, and the person who did the stepping probably doesn't feel a whole lot better, assuming they're not a narcissist. In most cases, the boundaries can be easily defined, and for most people, they can be maintained without extreme effort. However, some people, especially those who have a tendency to lean toward people-pleasing, like me, tend to have trouble enforcing boundaries with people who fail to recognize them time and time again. Enter the narcissist because you know they love people pleasers and empaths, right? This of course leads to a general clouding of our purpose in life, which can lead to depression, anxiety, and a number of other emotionally debilitating concerns, all of which can eventually lead to more serious and potentially harmful physical issues. So what can you do if you're stuck in a relationship with a battery busting narcissist? Well, I always suggest trying the gray rock rule here. Take a look at this. The idea of it is that you use this in order to encourage the narcissist to kind of lose interest in you. And what that means is that as you're going through the process of being gaslighted, rather than reacting the way you might normally react when they say twist a fact or name call or mess with your head, you recognize what they're doing as gaslighting and then you don't respond or react to it at all. You simply go, oh, that's, that's interesting. So if normally you would scream and act crazy or you would cry or you would throw things, don't do any of those things anymore. Just go, oh, mm -hmm. okay, I see you. Or nothing. You can say nothing. Now you're not trying to avoid contact with this person, but anytime they're coming at you with some manipulation or some name calling or games or anything like that, you don't give them what they want, which is your emotional energy. Because in some ways, these people are kind of like vampires when it comes to emotional energy. They want what you've got. They want all of it because they need it to survive. It's called narcissistic supply. While many relationships have the capacity to become good for you, those with toxic narcissists are almost always ill-fated. Still, the fact is that every relationship needs boundaries if you personally want to stay healthy. So if you want a simple way to define what a relationship boundary looks like, think about it this way. There are certain things you discuss with your best friend that you'd never discuss with your child or your mother, right? See, boundaries help to determine how much you give and how much you receive from a relationship. So if any of your relationships leave you feeling irritable, overwhelmed, stressed out, re-examine your boundaries that's a good sign that it's time to redefine them. The boundaries you set in your relationships are a reflection of your ego and your self-esteem. And obviously, if you have a low sense of self-worth, your boundaries are probably going to be unhealthy for you. You will likely be too focused on trying to please other people and receive love and approval. This causes you to overextend yourself and you don't demand enough from the other person in your life or the other person in the relationship. If your ego's overinflated, your boundaries are going to be aggressively set to maximize your own utility. It's like you're aware of the highway. That's usually the role played by the narcissist in this situation. So for best results, you need to seek middle ground when you're setting your boundaries. The following strategies will help you to set boundaries that are more empowering for you as well as another healthy person in a relationship, but not necessarily with a narcissist. Number one, decide on your core values. Ask yourself the following questions. First, what is your comfort level here? And then are you comfortable discussing your personal finances with other people? Do you like friends and family just showing up at your front door or would you like a little warning? Are you willing to let other people borrow your car, your money, or a cup of sugar? How much honesty do you really wanna give and how much honesty do you really wanna receive here? 
Some of your values are gonna vary depending on the other person. So you might let your best friend borrow your car, right? But no one else. Or certain people might be able to kind of come over and spend the night with your kids or by your, with you yourself on your couch, while other people, you're not gonna feel comfortable with that. So keep that in mind as you're setting your boundaries. Number two, determine what you need from the relationship. So when you're communicating your needs to the other person in a healthy, non-blaming manner, this is a positive thing and it does require a certain amount of assertiveness. Sometimes you gotta fake that a little until you get it, but it's not fair to expect anyone to read your mind and to predict all of your wants and needs. So keep that in mind. You have to be able to speak your boundaries. Number three, determine the other person's needs. Think win-win here. And when you approach the other person, do it with a pleasant conversation about their wishes and their needs in the relationship, as well as your own. Number four, determine the consequences. How are you gonna handle it if someone violates your boundaries in any given moment? Remind other people of your boundaries and then take action as needed. If someone shows up unannounced, for example, don't let them into your house unless you want them there. Or if someone's late again, maybe you leave and go somewhere else and you don't wait this time. Have consequences in mind when people do overstep their boundaries. Number five, be consistent. It's natural for other people to test you when you change the rules. It's important to be consistent or you won't be taken seriously here. So follow through and keep your word and remember that one slip into your old patterns might cause a serious argument. Number six, be prepared to let go. It's a hard one, but it is likely that some people are gonna keep behaving this way regardless of your efforts to set boundaries. You know who those people are. If someone is unable or unwilling to appreciate your boundaries and your requirements here, maybe you need to re-examine that relationship. Maybe that person isn't healthy for you. So let me ask you something. Are your relationship boundaries working for you? Redefining a relationship in general can be challenging and stressful. While this kind of change won't make you popular, it can certainly make you more powerful. When people can no longer take advantage of you, you're sure to experience some resistance. But when you maintain your efforts consistently, you and the people around you will ultimately benefit from this stuff. So what do you think? This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you been in a situation where you have needed to set boundaries and struggled with it? And do you think that's related to your relationship with a narcissist? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life and hey, Thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you here and here. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.